Hey everybody, this is Fully Off, and welcome back to another Minecraft video of me trying to set up a UHC server. Uh, I've done loads of stuff since the last time you were with me, uh, and I've had loads of comments about the about the videos so far. So thank you very much for those. One of the uh, one of the comments was left by uh, Top Five Things, who suggested that we create a twenty minute timer for anybody who's playing on the server who wants to record. A video uh, which I thought was a fantastic idea so that's what I've done the first thing I'll show you will be that it's, it's it was pretty simple to do uh, we've just set up a repeating command block that's always active that tests for the timer objective uh, or the time objective from the timer player and when it reaches a score of 25,000 which is just over 20 minutes I didn't want it to be exactly 20 minutes because the border starts to shrink on a, or the border will start to shrink on exactly 20 minutes uh, and I didn't want both uh, both titles to appear on screen at the same time so uh, bang on 20 minutes the uh, the world border is shrinking title will appear on the screen and then just after the 20 minute timer will appear uh, so anybody that's recording we'll know that, that 20 minutes has passed and we can set up as many of these as we like. If we wanted to do uh, one every every 20 minutes, we'd just set up another couple of these. But I think we the game won't last more than a couple of days, Minecraft days anyway. So I don't think that there's going to be any need for that, but we can do uh, if necessary. So thank you for that top five things. Fantastic idea that's been incorporated. Also what I've done uh, I was having a problem, and you may, um, I mentioned it in the last video, look at that, parkour, not me, I can't do it, uh, I, I mentioned it in the last couple of videos, when a team teleports to the same place, or when they're spread around the map, and a couple of team members are in the same place, I have had the effects, the particles effect, stay on the player, and it's taken me a while uh, to figure out why, and to be honest, I still don't know why that happens, However, I think I've got, got a, I think I've got around it. When we add the effect, and you may remember to get the teams on the right hand side of the screen, at the moment they're not there, but to get the players on the right hand menu, on the right hand side of the screen, I have to give them damage and then heal them. And, and again, that seems to be the only way I'm able to get them to reset on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, but I'm, I'm having to give them damage and then I'm having to repair them, having to give them instant health. And obviously when you give them a, a damage or when you give them the effect of damage and then instant health, there are particle effects associated with it and they're those farty swirly things. Uh, and on occasion they've stayed on the player and I've not been able to get rid of them. So all through the game he's had these particle effects which is really off-putting. Uh, so in order to get rid of those, I believe we have to give them the effect uh, to everybody of instant damage for uh, one second. And then at the end of it, at the end of the command, we put true. And I believe that takes the particle effects off that effect. Does that make any sense? Are you understanding? Have I, have I explained that? So you get the, the instant damage damage effect over there and then this one a few ticks later gives you the instant health effect which heals you back up again and also I've given the command uh, a true state which I believe takes the particle effect off I'll we'll work on that it's a work in progress I don't know exactly I haven't tried that since I've put it on there next what have I done I've added what I wanted to do at the end of the game uh, I wanted to announce to everybody who was the winner. And I wanted to do that using the title effect, the, the same effect that we use when a player dies or when the world border is shrinking. I want it to appear on the screen that Fully Off Cam is the winner. Uh, and to do that, I've ha had to add, I've had to add a, another objective. And that would be a, uh, a, it's a, it's an objective that keeps track of how many players are still alive or how many players have got lives scoreboard objectives list uh, so I've added you might see I don't know if I can show you you probably can't see my cursor but we've got the dead objective we've got the health objective we've got the kills objective we've got the deaths objective we've got the time dummy objective I've added in the middle the lives dummy objective and with it being a dummy objective it means I can manipulate it 
So we've had to add that objective using the uh, scoreboard objectives, add lives uh, and then dummy objective and call it lives. And these two command blocks here are what keep track of that. This particular command block tests for whether or not there are any players on the server that have got a score of lives equal to one. So at the start of every game, everybody is given, uh, as you can see at the top of the screen now, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, it's sort of sport my thunder there. Anyway, everybody's given a live score of one, uh, which I'm currently displaying at the top of the screen so I know which players have got a live score of one. Uh, and that command block tests to see if there are any players with that score of lives equals one. Uh, and depending on how many players there are, that gives out a redstone signal. So if there are five players playing at the start of the game, that redstone line there will have a strength signal strength of five. Once it gets down to there only being one player left on the server with one life, uh, in effect, everybody else, else has died and there's only one player left, that turns on this redstone torch, which activates this command block, which is the one that prints the title on the screen that tells you that a player is the winner. And this command block, uh, it, it uses the dead objective, which we set up the other day. So if a player dies, their dead objective, not the death one, their dead one, increments by one. And if, they're, uh, if their uh, dead score goes up by one to one, then it resets the live score. So the player's live score then reduces down to zero. I'm not sure I'm making much sense to myself. So, but anyway, this, this checks to see if a player has died. If a player has died, it resets their live score to zero. That command block tests to see how many players are left with a live score of one. And obviously if you've died, then you've got a live score of zero. Yeah? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm just about. So these both need to be active, um, always active, and that needs to be always active. Otherwise, it won't continually check for them. I've also, I'm also playing with this. Uh, in, the, in the last episode, we set this up, which removes players from the, the list on the right-hand side when they die. And I had it on a clock that cycled round. I am currently testing to see if I can get the same command in an always active repeating command block. Because that's going to cut down on a little bit of lag because there's less flashing redstone about. That is that. Let me let me show you how that works. Let me currently show you how that works. Um, yeah, so let me reset everything. Reset everything. We'll start the game. Both myself and Frills are on the pink team. Yes, we are. So we should finish up in the same place. Game time. There are no particle effects. Fabulous. We both appear on the right-hand side of the screen. There we are. Fabulous. If I... World board is shrinking because I've currently got that set to only a couple of ticks. If I kill... Thrill cam, so it's thrill cam. Brilliant. Thrill cam has died. And Frilly Off is the winner because I'm the last one standing. Brilliant. And also, it, it does show up on the right hand side that I've got a kill count of one. I think that is working. And if I go on to the Frill Cam account, let's see if I can switch over to the Frill Cam account. Frill Cam account is in spectator mode and he's, uh, he spawned exactly where he died. So that is brilliant. Dead pleased with that. We are very, very close to having a working game. Uh, and I'm dead pleased. Right, what's next? In the last episode, in the last video, I spoke about having a PvP area at spawn where you you're TP'd around the world randomly, as you know, uh, and then you have and then the world border starts to shrink, forcing you to make your way to the centre of the map. 
and at the center of the map I wanted a PvP area and I wanted it to look like the raid map. Now I've I found the raid map. I'll leave a link to the uh, I'll leave a link to where you can find this on the internet. It's it's been made by a a YouTuber called Nick. Uh, and it's fantastic. It's a brilliant map, uh, and I'll, I'll put a down. I'll put a link to the download of the map in the description. And I've had to I've had to modify it a little bit to get it to fit into into my area. But it's brilliant. Have a look at this. Now, if anybody, any of you are familiar with the raid map on Black Ops Two, this is almost block for block. All the dimensions are the same. Um, the map itself that Nick did is huge. It's got roads leading off. It's got buildings over in the distance. Uh, I didn't need any of that. It's got roads leading down the side here and away that way and over in that way. Didn't need any of that. So it's taken me quite a long time to, uh, to, to get it to fit into this area and to do a load of landscaping around it to get it to fit. It's also made out of wool which I didn't want, so I've had to change all of the wool out and I've changed it to coloured concrete, which again took an absolute age. Uh, and as I say, I've had, to, I've had to terraform a lot of the area around it to get it to fit. But I think it looks brilliant. So Nick, pat yourself on the back, mate. This is phenomenal. Do, 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 do. So just I'll have a quick run around it. As I say, if you if you're fam familiar with the map, you'll know exactly what's going on here. If you're not, then this is just a really good end game PvP area um, where there's loads of places to run about, a couple of rooms for you to hide in. Uh, I've added a couple of doors just to make it slightly easier to get about, but predominantly it's exactly the same map. Now the only problem with this at the moment is let me just go into game mode 3 to show you the only problem at the moment is the uh, the entire map was purpose built uh, and there is nothing underneath it so there are a couple of areas here if if you decide to dig through them do a bit of spleef in poop you straight through into the bottom now I've covered the bottom with water and a bit of lighting so hopefully mobs won't spawn down here well in testing, they've uh, we've had the odd one or two, but nothing, you know, nothing major. Uh, and also, if you do fall through, you're not going to die because you're going to land in in water. But you know, it's advisable not to dig through. You just just there. If you were to dig through the the table, uh, the uh, basketball court there, you you'll fall straight down into the bottom. I may well get round to filling this in later, but there's no easy way of doing it. I can't use a fill command uh, because I run the risk of filling anything above. The structure, unless there is a fill command in World Edit that uh, that I've, I don't know about, and that's very very possible because I'm not a an expert on uh, on uh, World Edit. So that is pretty much what I've been doing for the last couple of days. Uh, so now I think I'm going to have to grab a couple of people and do some do some live testing, which is going to be <laughs> which is going to be a blast. Okay, to finish off today, then I think we'll set up our Discord channel that's going to allow players to speak to each other. Now, as I mentioned the other day, I'm going to need to set up a folder called UHC and then add some roles to allow players to access that particular channel, I believe. If there's an easier way of doing it, I'm sure you guys will let me know. Uh, so to start with, I guess, let's jump over to the Discord channel. So I'm currently on my Discord channel, and at the moment, as you can see on the left, I've got uh, the general general channel, the AFK channel, and uh, the staff chat channel. Uh, I need to create a UHC channel, but before I do that, I want to add some permission, uh, some roles. So if I go to server settings, and then to roles and then add a role we'll call the new role UHC and what color shall we give it let's give it the 
Oh, I don't know. It's not going to be important, I guess. We'll give it. Uh, we'll give it orange. Yeah, we'll give it orange. Why not? Uh, and that's going to allow people to. Uh, we don't want them to create an instant invite. Uh, probably allow them to change their nicknames, read text. Yeah, send messages. Yeah, send. Yeah. Uh, attach files, read messages, mention everyone. This is probably not important to start with. They're the two. That's the the, the two important ones. I need them to be able to connect to voice and to speak. So as long as those two are um, active, then the rest of them I will mess about with later. So I've saved that up. Now I need to create the channel. So if we create well actually a category, if we create a category and call it UHC, uh, we want to make it private and we want to make only members of the server that have got the UHC status, the role we've just created, we only want those players to be able to access this, uh, probably the staff as well, just in case. So we've created the category over on the left now, UHC. Uh, we want to add some channels to it. So these now are the the channels for the uh, for the teams. So in no particular order, uh, we'll have we'll have Team Blue. Team Blue. We want voice channel, uh, private channel, only UHC, create, and we've got Team Blue on the left. So I need to do that now with all of them. Team Green. Voice channel, private, UHC, create. I'll just do that for the other the three teams that are left. Okay, so now we've got all of our teams listed down the left-hand side in the UHC category. And at the bottom, we've got a dead category. Now, this is going to take some trust on everybody's uh, part here that's playing the game because there's no way uh, to... Obviously, everybody else will be able to see where the players are. But if you die, you're going to have to put yourself into the dead team. So if I if my team was Team Blue, I'd put myself in, in the blue team. The rest of my team would put myself in the blue team as well. The blue team would be able to talk to each other. Once I die, I'm going to have to put myself in the dead team. And then obviously I can speak to everybody else who's dead, but I won't be able to communicate with my team member who's left in the blue team because uh, like I said I don't want people to be able to tell their teammates where everybody else is hiding and whatever uh, so uh, so that is discord set up uh, which was pretty straightforward well we seem to have a little bit of time left over at the end of the episode so I think we'll we'll do another couple of things before I go I, I mentioned the other day about the names I think I mentioned the other day it's been a while uh, since I started this but I, I, uh, I've been thinking about the names above the players and and the visibility of the names because when you get to the end game, when you get to the the raid uh, PvP area at the top, what you don't want to be doing is being able to see. Uh, or you you don't want other players to be able to see your name tag because if you're hiding, obviously you you want to be hidden. You don't want to have the name tag uh, visible. And there are a couple of ways we can sort that out now. I think I mentioned we can either have the name tags, uh, the frilly off cam, as you can see there. We can either have that always visible. We can either have it only visible to your teammates or we can have it only visible to your enemies. Now, I think that having it only visible to your enemies is, is a non-starter. I can't understand why you'd want that. Anyway, uh, so we uh, we want to be able to either switch it so you can either see your teammate or you can't see your teammate. And to do that, we use a scoreboard objective. So at the moment, I'm on the pink team. Am I on the pink team? I'm on. Yeah, there I am on the pink team. So it's visible to me. So if we go to scoreboard and teams and options for the pink team, if you scroll through those, you can see name tag visibility and we want to set that if we set that to always nothing's going to change because i can see it if we change that to hide from other teams nothing's going to change because i can i'm not on another team so if we change it to hide for your own team it disappears 
brilliant because at the end of the game, as I mentioned before, it's a uh, it, it's a last man standing kind of game. So even though you're on the same team as somebody else, at the end, if you two are the only two players standing, uh, you're going to have to kill one of your teammates. I, I I can probably change it so that a team wins rather than a player wins. I don't know. If, yeah, that's probably something I can work on. Let me make a note of that. Teams win, so it's a team game rather than in, an individual game. Uh, but at the moment, it's uh, I'm, I'm working on the premise that it's a, an individual game, so you are, you are going to have to kill your own teammate. So if we, as I say, if we change that to uh, uh, own, uh, hide from your own team, then you won't be able to see them. Uh, but if we change it back to always, then you will be able to see it. That's one thing. I'm going to have to set up a, set a couple of command blocks to do that. What I also want to do, as far as teams are concerned is I want to be able to change the uh, friendly fire. So currently friendly fire is on. So I can kill Frill Cam, which is, like I just said, uh, something you're going to have to be able to do. But if we change the friendly fire to... Uh, friendly fire to... I think it's false. If we change friendly fire to false... So game mode... Uh, friendly fire falls means I can I can whack through I can whack my uh, own teammates which yeah which is uh, which is what I want to do so I'll pop through here uh, and I'll set up another couple of lines we're going to have to have uh, a line of command blocks because you can't do this on mass for every team you have to do it team specific so I'll have to have one command block for the green team one for the blue team one for the red team one for the pink team one for the yellow team to turn friendly fire on. And then another line that turns friendly fire off. And then I'll have to have another line down here that makes the visibility of your name tags visible. And then another line that makes it invisible. So let me just put those in and we'll have a look at them in a second. So there you go. That's uh, They're the four lines of command blocks that are needed, hopefully, to as long as I've got all of these on always active. I believe I have. We'll test it out. Always active, tested out now. So at the moment, um, if we put friendly fire off, Frill's on my team, so I can't whack him. Frill cam. If I put friendly fire on, <laughs> I can whack him. Brilliant. Let me turn it back off again. Friendly fire back off. Fabulous. Now the name tag is currently on. You can see it. So if I turn it off, so that, that will now never appear, um, which is brilliant. Turn the name tag on, and I can see him because I'm on his team. Let me just quickly run in here and two teams, change the team. So both of us are on set different teams now. <laughs> brilliant, I can't see his name tag, which is fabulous. So you so you can either see the uh, your teammate or you can't. Maybe I'll, I'll have it so that when there are only two of you left, if you've got the name tags on for your teammates, so you know where your teammate is, uh, at the end of the game when there are only two of you left and you fight to the death, maybe I'll get it to turn the turn the team names off so you can't see your teammate. However, that I think will do for today. We are super close to having a working game. So as usual, thank you very much for watching, everybody. It's been brilliant having you along. If you have enjoyed the episode, please don't forget to leave it a like. And if you've really loved it, don't forget to subscribe for future videos. This is Frillioth, and I'm out of here. <laughs>